The member for Fredericton South and leader of his party. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, what a bill. You know, Madam Speaker, I attended my first union meeting when I was 23 years old as a proud member of CUPE, 23. I recognize the value and the importance and the work that unions were doing for me and my co-workers at the time. I was also, at another time in my life, a member of the Fédération de la Santé du Québec, working in a hospital, and recognized the tremendous protections that were afforded through legislation and our union to those, uh, to myself and my colleagues, working in the hospitals of Quebec. This government, Madam Speaker, speaks of balance all the time. All the time. And what this does is undermine the balance that currently exists in the Public Services Labor Relations Act. And New Brunswickers aren't going to buy it because, Madam Speaker, so many New Brunswickers have benefited from their union membership across this province over time, whether it was working in the mills, mines, and factories of this province, private sector unions. In fact, right now, Madam Speaker, the first contract is being negotiated under first contract legislation that was passed in this House uh, some few years ago important step forward, important step forward to, to uh, uh, ensure that, that uh, first contracts could be negotiated fairly, uh, Madam Speaker. And of course the public sector workers from across this province, whether they work as porters in hospitals or nurses, whether they work as bus drivers or teachers, the list is long. So you could say the province is watching this bill. Uh, Madam Speaker, because it unbalances the, the, the uh, arrangement between, uh, between the public sector unions and the government as the employer. It erodes the public sector unions, um, if it would if it were adopted, Madam Speaker. I mean, uh, people have spoken eloquently about exactly why, why it's unfair why it is untenable that placement workers, scabs, would be brought in when there weren't sufficient people to uh, staff, staff the uh, workplace as negotiated or determined by the Labour Board. But here's the thing, Madam Speaker, if there was a better relationship with the unions of this province, <laughs> and unions, make no mistake about it, are an essential element of our society. Other countries recognize this, other jurisdictions recognize this and, and treat unions with respect and as, as a, a key player in the development of society. Think of any Scandinavian country, for example, Madam Speaker. That's how that goes. That's how that goes down. Something like this wouldn't be tolerated there. If there was respect, Madam Speaker, there was res respect in the case that there weren't sufficient essential workers uh, available uh, in place, then that needs to be worked out between the union and the employer. Ensure that, that uh, as agreed to, the positions are covered. What a, what a sensible thing. What a sort of sane approach, Madam Speaker. And uh, that's that's the approach that should be taken. It shouldn't require legislation to ram something down the throat of uh, unions and the, their members working in our public sector. But cooperation, even during a labor dispute, Madam Speaker, on, pre, on, on agreed to norms during a labor dispute, which is what we're talking about in part here, those agreed to norms can be maintained through discussion so that union members replace union members who, uh, for whatever reason, might be unavailable. I mean, we know we have, we have lots of people who these days are off because of 
one of three, at least, viruses, uh, Madam Speaker. And so those kinds of things can happen during a, during a strike. Can get worked out. Can get worked out. And that's the way that we should be proceeding as New Brunswickers. The government as the employer, the union as the representative, the employees, the workers, public sector workers, through negotiation, through discussion, to make up shortfalls. So there, there are a number of problems with this bill, Madam Speaker, a number of problems. The imbalance between the, the time frame for giving a notice for lockout versus notice of strike, the changes to the, um, the arbitration process that are being proposed here, and so on as well to the one I started mentioning in the first place with replacement workers. So, Madam Speaker, this needs to go to law amendments. It needs to go to law amendments to ensure that representatives of the public sector employees, their union representatives, have a voice at the table since they weren't consulted in the first place. So, government decided not to consult in the first place, we will try and, we're trying to fix it here with the motion that, uh, that the member for uh, Trakadish Shaila brought forward. Important motion. Let's fix it. Let's give a voice. As should have been the, the case in, at the very beginning, before anything came to this House, to the, to the public sector unions and bring them to the table in an open hearing at Law Amendments Committee, bring them down from the galleries on a level playing field with, with the members at Law Amendments Committee to hear them out, to ask questions, to see what their view is about this bill, how they, can, how they, how they might suggest the issues that this bill purports to try and resolve are the issues. Let's hear from them. If they think they are, what are their solutions? That's what consultation would have involved, Madam Speaker, but it never happened. So we can fix that, Madam Speaker, with, uh, with sending this bill to the uh, Law Amendments Committee. That's where it should go, Madam Speaker. And uh, if it can't go there, it can't go anywhere. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker.